Okay, hello and welcome everyone to Writing Relevant Resumes. My name is Jasker Andesi, I'm career advisor here at the Career and Professional Development Center. And we'll be talking about resume development and cover letters today. Okay, if you have any questions at any point in time, please feel free to go ahead and type those in the chat or please feel free to speak up at any point in time. So we're gonna be going over the application, purpose of the resume, steps to writing relevant resume, accomplishment statements, and then a covered letter overview as well. So you might be thinking, well, this is a resume workshop. Why are we talking through of the application? In lots of places now, resume is a component of the application as opposed to being the entirety of the application. So most of the places that you will apply for, whether it's CSU Stanislaus, whether it's Gallo, whether it's the county, almost every place that you will apply for, they have their own application portal in which you'll have to put a lot of the same information that is in your resume on in that application portal. Reason why you want to be especially thorough in the application is because the employers utilize the application as a screening tool. So your chances of going through to the next round are going to be dependent upon how thorough you are in your application. So what you'll see is a lot of times a list of resumes will not be accepted in lieu of the completed application but it is a component. Sometimes the cover letter is a component as well. So some of the basics that you wanna go over in application, one rule of thumb is to have your application be as thorough as possible with your resume just containing the pertinent information to, um, to that particular job. So you wanna create a master application. Now, if you're applying for lots of government jobs, they utilize a portal such as NeoGov, you should be able to utilize the same basic application for most private employers, though, again, as we mentioned, they have their own individualized portal, so you have to enter in a lot of this information again. But what basically what they're asking for is your work history, your dates of employment, the job titles, uh, your address, and your phone number. Again, your address goes in the application and does not go in your resume. They'll ask for um, you know your supervisors and reasons for leaving as well that you have. That, and that information doesn't need to go on your resume again. So um, it'll be e easier uh, to complete any job application if you have those things ahead of time. Okay. So this is just some language here of what you wanna pay, uh, pay attention to. So if you take a look, this is from CSU Stanislaus. You wanna make sure before applying to any job that you go ahead and review the job uh, application or the job notice fully, because what it's gonna do is it's going to give you an indication of what they're wanting. So even if you are the most qualified candidate, you're the best candidate, but you haven't complied with what they're asking you for. So let's say in respect to this, they're asking you for your employment application, they're asking you for a cover letter, and they're asking you for a resume. And you have not sent those things, which you're gonna, what's gonna end up happening is that you will not be uh, moved forward to the next round here. Sorry about that, we have some people still logging in here. So trying to get account for everybody coming in here. So this is another example. Again, what you'll see here is that this application is due by 5 p.m. on the final filing date. Again, you, make, you wanna make sure that you do adhere to that because if you are even uh, a minute or two late, your application will not be accepted there here. Again, down below, resume may be attached. Now, anytime they say may be attached, but not substituted, you always wanna make sure that you try to attach at least some level of the resume. Sometimes they will ask you for your uh, proof of education or your transcripts. Um, there'll be a supplemental application as well. That's what you wanna pay attention to before we get into the actual resume component of it. Just some additional examples here. Now let's touch on this for a second here, reasons for leaving previous employment, okay? Your reasons for leaving employment, you want to make sure that you frame these appropriately. You never want to present yourself or present your former employer in a negative light. You know, so for example, on the application, um, you know, you don't want to say uh, no, no opportunity for growth, uh, hated my coworkers, uh, moved away, you know, what have you. So some of the safe reasons, you know, laid off due to lack of work, seeking different opportunities, um, uh, advancement, you know, uh, relocated for additional opportunities as well. So we'll get into the resume now. The purposes of a resume. Your resume is ultimately going to be dependent upon the function that you want it to serve. So resumes, uh, most of the time we associate with applying for jobs. They also serve for applying for scholarships. They serve for graduate school applications. They also serve as references for letters of recommendation. 
Some of you may be applying for graduate school. Every, grad, every time I've asked for a letter of recommendation, um, the person I'm asking for almost always asks me for my resume. Now, that's not, um, you shouldn't take that kind of as a negative, especially if it's a professor. They ask for, um, you know, they get asked for references uh, many, many times. So they have hundreds and hundreds of students. So what the resume does is it serves as, as a reference point in which to um, pull information from. Key thing to take away from this workshop, two things that absolutely we'd like for you to take away. Number one, resumes don't get you hired. Resumes get you interviewed. So if you are applying for a lot of jobs and you have not seen the success in getting called back, that's a sign to us that your resume needs some review. So that's what you should take away from that. Number two, you never want to apply for something utilizing the same resume twice. So the way in which you can make your resume instantly better is to tailor it to what you wanting it to do. So if it's for a job, tailor it for that job. If it's applying for the scholarship, what is that scholarship seeking? Maybe a component of the scholarship is community service. You probably wanna have some level of community service on your resume as well. So how we begin with writing a resume is to have a master resume or a master list of everything that you've done in your um, working life. So if you are working right now, fast food, retail, and you think that might not be relatable to the kinds of things that you're gonna be doing in the future, write down a list of everything that you do in that position, whether you think it's relatable or not. It inevitably will help you down the line. How you write a really good resume is by dissecting the job application. So take some time to uh, look over the job application. Never wanna apply for a job without reading the entirety of the application. Number one, reading the application is going to give you insight on what they're wanting um, in terms of your qualifications, but it's also gonna give you insight in terms of the technical aspects. When is the final filing date? Is there an exam associated with it? Do they want just a resume or do they want a cover letter? Do they want proof of education? All of those things that we talked about in the beginning that can get you um, disqualified from, from that position for arbitrary things like not completing the application. Okay. Um, you want to identify some key skills. If you are applying for multiple jobs within the same industry, let's say you're applying for jobs in business and you're looking to go into supply chain, you probably want to identify some of the key skills that that field um, requires. So maybe it's detail oriented, maybe it's multitasking, maybe communication is an essential function. You want to make sure you have those listed as well. And then again, as we mentioned, you want to tailor your resumes for whatever that position is that you're applying for. And you will eventually get into a, into a point where you have multiple versions. So maybe you have your resume for um, your jobs that you're applying for education, resumes that you have for scholarships, resumes that you're applying for the private sector or the public sector. Okay. So how do we go about tailoring your resume? So tailoring your resume essentially means measuring the job description. What you're doing, again, as we mentioned, never apply for a job without reading the job description you are looking to pick up on theme. So if you're reading a job description and in that job description, the employer is talking about communication over and over and over again, it's a fair bet that you wanna have communication listed as one of your skills or you wanna showcase how you uh, portray good communication in the past through your experiences, right? So the job description helps you to pick up on the themes. It gets you more familiarized with that employer, but it also gives you a sense for how you can show how your experience fits. So if you go through the job description and you're looking at the bullet points, and the employer is saying, you know, leading teams, leading multifaceted teams, you may want to go ahead and write in the margins there where you have that experience and then utilize that for your resume as well. It also gives you a chance, tailoring the resume is to get familiarized with what that company values. So you'll see in the job description, you know, um, we value proactiveness or we value forward thinking or, um, you know, our company culture is very loose in that sense. So if you're playing at a tech company, let's say, so they have usually a pretty laid back atmosphere, right? So that kind of gives you some more indication of that working environment. You can work that into your resume and it'll help you a little bit when you go to interview also. So this is a typical job description here. Uh, this is for uh, Learning Quest, which is a GED um, place here in Modesto. Nonprofit. So this typical, what, what you'll see, what you want to do is, again, like we mentioned, you want to pick up on themes. So you're highlighting keywords. The average employer takes a look at your resume for less than a minute. If they're not seeing the things that they want to see, um, then that disincentivizes them from continuing to read. 
So if they're talking about here in this job description, maintain, evaluate, instruct, teach, plan and promote, explain available services. One of the uh, areas in which uh, students get stuck on is you're thinking, well, I'm applying for this job, but right now I work at McDonald's or I work at In-N-Out, what have you. I don't do any of those things, or I work at Kohl's. You wanna think in the sense that, yes, you probably don't do that in a career capacity in terms of promoting career and employment related programs, but how many times do you promote specials and promos in your job? How many times do you explain available services? Uh, when somebody checks out, you always promote a credit card. That's what we're really talking about in terms of finding those commonalities. So think less about the product of that job that you're in. So if you're in fast food, think less about the food. If you're in retail, think less about the clothes or whatever um, things that your company sells. Find those commonalities and what the employer is wanting to see. So um, think about customer service, collaboration, conflict resolution, uh, multitasking, all of those kind of things beyond the product of what it is that you do. That's how you really translate your skills. So you want to utilize similar language in those documents. You never want to go ahead and copy and paste. What you're doing is you're summarizing it to make it more um, relatable to that particular employer. So next, we're going to get into a star statements here. Now, almost what I can, again, the goal of a resume is for you to get an interview. Once you get to that interview, I can almost guarantee you that they're going to ask you two questions guaranteed. Number one, tell me about yourself, right? Tell me about yourself. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, what do you do on the weekends or what are your hobbies? In my estimation, that tell me about yourself is about 40% of the interview. What it's really asking you is, Tell me about yourself in the sense of how do you qualify or what do you bring to this position? Number two question that they're really going to ask almost always deals with the star statements. You're almost always going to get into a situation where the employer um, asks you a situational question. Now, if you go into the private sector, they almost always ask pure situational kinds of questions. Tell me about a time in which, right? Tell me about a time in which you had to overcome conflict in the workplace. The way in which to really um, respond to that is utilizing the same STAR method that we're going to talk about that applies to the resume, right? So this is a way for you to respond to those questions, but to be thorough in the resume and the interview as well. So the STAR statement is the situation. Where were you when you did that? Okay. The task. What was your responsibility? What steps did you take in your action? Okay. What was accomplished? So where students get hung up here is that a lot of times they focus more so on trying to find a really, a really um, overwhelming kind of example, a really impressive example that's going to resonate with that employer, you know. Um, focus less on the example. The example matters less, right, in terms of what you did. They're looking to get a feel for your thought process. So how you might respond to this, you're working fast food right now, you're working retail, you know, a basic way to respond to this. As an associate at McDonald's, during the lunchtime rush, I was responsible for taking orders. Customer came in very upset, saying that we got their order wrong. The steps that I took were to listen to the customer, uh, not to accelerate the conversation, not to exacerbate anything. I went back and reviewed the orders. I realized that we did make a mistake. I um, fixed the customer's order. The, um, the result was that we were able to continue on and serve the other customers, right? Basic in that sense going through the thought process. They're looking for those specific action steps. This also serves in the resume because you can utilize these in your bullet points when you list under your experience. For me, that's basically the essence of your resume or the, or the meat and potatoes of what you've done is you're translating your experiences that you've had into what that employer is going to do here. So when you do start with those accomplishment statements, you want to make sure that you are being as um, active as you can, not passive in the sense. So you don't want to list your bullet points with, you know, I am responsible for. So number one, I don't like to use I really when I'm writing my resume at all. You want to be pretty dynamic, led, marketed, researched, developed, created. Those are the kinds of words that you want to utilize. And then you can build upon that from there as well. So good example is here, right? You want to use phrases, um, but you want to showcase how you do those things in addition to just listing them. So if you're calling yourself a team player, right, collaborate with a team of three people. So notice how this relates to those star statements as well, right? What's missing? So you're telling me what you did, the action that you took kind of, but you're not telling me where you were, 
you're not telling me what the result was, right? And you're not telling me what the actions were that you took. For results oriented, right? Develop, market, marketed, and executed event with over 100 participants. How would you make this better? So you might want to say, develop, marketed, and executed new student orientation event with over 100 participants to facilitate student onboarding and registration. You know, the actions and what the result was. That's what's missing here. So the structures of a resume, you'll see a few different structures of a resume. Now, I, the structures aren't as important to me as the content, to be perfectly honest with you. I still utilize the most basic structure in mine. I utilize the chronological format just because it's easiest for me. And um, it helps me to tell my story better in that sense. So there's chronological, right? Most commonly used, it's, and it's exactly how it says. You start with the most recent experience first, and then you work backwards. Your functional ones, this might get into when you're probably middle career, um, when you want to talk about particular skills. So if you have a particular coding or research experience or what have you, you might develop your resume that way. And then the combination kind of gives weight to both. I don't like to overthink things when I get to the resume. I just utilize the most basic format. That's the chronological. Now, I'm talking about basic in terms of what I'm doing, what I'm developing. Don't use templates. Templates will mess you up going forward because the resume is a living, breathing document. It's designed to grow as your experiences grow. If you're utilizing a template, um, it's gonna get pretty messy when you go back to try to add or change those kinds of things. So the simpler you can keep it, probably the better. The templates don't do a really good job of keeping things simple and it, it's really distracting for the employers as well. So I would suggest you do a chronological resume on a blank Word document and that's probably gonna serve you, serve you pretty well going forward. Okay. Sections to have on your resume. So there's no hard and soft rule in terms of what sections you should and shouldn't have. If I'm an employer, though, just knowing from when I've hired people, the sections you probably absolutely want to have, your education and experience, definitely. Those two, absolutely, you want to have. I probably like to have skills on there as well. The objective is going to come and go in that sense. So we've heard it both ways from employers that, yes, we want you to have an objective other employers say, well, yeah, you know, the objective is kind of redundant. Um, we know that you're applying for this job just because you're applying for this job. What the objective does do is it allows you to really write your resume a little easier. So it's, the objective is more for you as opposed to the employer. So if your objective is, you know, applying for a student assistant position with the Career and Professional Development Center, that helps set the tone of your resume because everything that comes after that is going to be in support of that thesis state, right? So then when I talk about my skills, I'm going to talk about the skills that they want in the Career and Professional Development Center. When I talk about my education, maybe I'm a communication major, maybe they want a specific number of uh, particular GPA. I want to showcase that I have that, right? And then I want to go into my experience in the projects. You can also go in here and list certifications that you have. You can also list, you know, volunteer experience. So things can be taken out. Now, projects, I want to talk about projects for a second. When would you list projects? You would probably list projects when you don't have a lot of work experience. You want to supplement your work experience with those projects. You can list the projects if you do have a level of work experience, but the projects are really designed to showcase things that you have done in, related, in relation to that position if you haven't had the work experience yet. So you would want to list those exactly like a job. So you might say, you know, uh, cost benefit analysis, um, list the class, right? Financial accounting, list the semester, uh, spring 2022, and then give a couple of bullet points. Develop cost benefit analysis in conjunction with three colleagues uh, to determine blah, 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 right? Give a couple of those same bullet points the way in which you would list your experience. So this is an example uh, of a resume for an uh, applicant tracking system. What, what happens more and more is that these employers are feeding your resume into automated systems, right? Because it's an automated system, what the resume is going to do is it's it, what, what that, I guess, what that program is designed to do is pick up on those kind of keywords, right? So you want to make sure that you're hinting at some of those kinds of things. Now, if you've applied and the applicant tracking system, it rejected your application. If you apply at least for, for government jobs, you can always ask them to go back and reconsider your application. So I've had that happen where um, they said, you know, you don't meet the qualifications. And then I've called and I said, well, can somebody in HR look at it? They go back and they look at it and they say, oh, you, you are qualified. So keep that in mind. You can absolutely do that. Okay. 
the main thing here is you want to be simple, you want to be to the point, and you want to be as direct as you can, right? So here, this is just an example of a combination resume. Uh, again, average employer takes a look at your resume for about a minute. These things like this can be busy. So if I'm an employer, I'm just looking at, I'm like, I don't want to read this. You know, I, I don't want to read a big paragraph. It's easier for me to read bullet points and those kind of things. So, and if I'm just going, you know, I want you to review, okay, reviews on there. I want you to interview, you know, I want you to do some of this kind of stuff. If it's easier for them to see, that's going to resonate with them a lot more. So again, same thing, um, summaries. I'm not a big fan of summaries. I probably wouldn't have a summary on there, um, you know, unless they really ask you for it. I tend to go with something more like this, chronological, it's easier for me. And even with this one, probably as you're just beginning out, beginning out again, number one, you wanna center this information. You don't wanna have your, um, your address on there. I would probably put the education more towards the top and then list a couple of skills that really relate to it. But beyond that, I think that's fine. Keep in mind with these resumes is the format to me, the format can only do harm, I think, right? So lack of a format can only harm. There's not a whole lot the format can do to improve your chances, but there is a standard kind of benchmark that you should have. So standard for me in the sense is do what you're doing, but do it consistently. So noticing these experiences, right? Workforce specialist, Modesto, date, and then the job. So they have all of the job titles bolded right? They're listing them all the same way. So they're listing the job, listing the location, listing when that occurred, and they're listing where that was at, a few bullet points, and they're going in order. That's basically what we mean essentially by consistency. So there's no rule that says, you know, your section headings should be underlined as opposed to bolded, right? Do what you feel, but do it, do it consistently. Yeah, and there's a message in chat. If you can list your um, first and last names in, in the Zoom for attendance, that'd be great. So Eli is going to be collecting attendance for us here. Okay, so let's talk about some myths for your resume, right? Again, as we establish, resumes don't get you hired. Okay, they get you interviewed. You must keep your resume to one page. Resumes don't have to be one page with the caveat that certain disciplines only want you to have them one page computer science, accounting, they're pretty stringent on you having them just one page. Now, that also doesn't mean that if you're not in those disciplines, your resume should be, you know, eight or nine pages. Your resume, you really want to think about, okay, it can be two pages. Is what you're putting in that second page of value to the employer? That's really what you want to ask yourself. If it's not, then leave it out, right, in that sense. Uh, fancy formatting is not better. So you absolutely should not have your picture on your resume. Don't have anything that's not black and white, right? So don't use any other font than that. Um, don't do use any kind of special paper, like, you know, the, the paper with the clouds in the background or anything like that. The simpler, the better. Okay. You also don't need to include all of your experience. Again, what you, you, what you might want to do is put all of that into the actual application and then keep your resume one page just with the pertinent information that the employer wants to see. And then again, your home address is not required on the resume. So that's the resume, right? And a lot of the applications, they'll ask you for a cover letter as well. The cover letter, what the cover letter is not, the cover letter is not a repeat of your resume. And so that, that's an easy mistake to make. What, this, what students will do a lot of times is they'll, they'll take their everything that's in their resume and they'll put it in paragraph form and that's my cover letter. That, that's not what it's intended to do. What the distinction is, is that the resume gives the employer a feel for how you qualify for the position, right? It can only do so much though. The cover letter allows the employer to establish fit, suitability, and get an impression of why you want that position, which is really important. Why are you applying for this job? What is it that you hope to accomplish? What is it that you're hoping to do? It also gives the employer insight through a couple of specific examples that you want to list about some of the experiences you listed in your resume. Right. So cover letters take time, right? Um, they do get easier as you go along. Now, cover letters do, you do want to stick, those, stick the cover letters to one page though, right? How you want to format your cover letter, right? Well, let's talk about the purpose. Again, the purpose, bring your skills and experiences to, to life. You also want to um, express some level of congruency with the mission of that company, right? 
Um, what do you value? Do you value some of the same things that that employer does? If so, that's really good to showcase to the employer, right? You want to create a narrative, much like your resume, but um, specific examples of your strengths, right? So it's one thing to say on your resume that you're an effective communicator, but it's another thing to showcase an example. You know, I communicate effectively as um, evidenced by my three years of um, leading new student orientation, right? Um, those are just some kind of examples that you can utilize, right? Again, what you don't want to do is you, you don't want to repeat your resume. So you can also really overthink the cover letter as well. Okay, again, you're going to start your cover letter with your information like you do with a resume. So what I mean by that is you're going to have your name, you're going to have your phone number, you're going to have your email. Then after that, it's structured like, like a letter. So in the left-hand corner, you're going to have your date. And then below that, you want to address it to if there's anybody listed, right, on that job application. So let's say you're applying for, um, applying for a job here, Career and Professional Development Center. And you go on our website and you realize who our director is, you would probably want to address it to that director, right? And then you want to put their position, then you want to put, you know, CSU Stanislaus, Turlock, blah, blah, blah. If you don't have that information, who that person is, you can put, you know, director, career and professional development center. You can put human resources, you know, whatever, whatever you want to put that you think is relevant there. Next line, if you have that person's name, you can put, you know, dear uh, Mrs. Smith, right? If you don't, you can say to whom it may concern. Okay. And then beyond that is where we really get into it, right? Your first paragraph is your statement of intent. Pretty basic. So now when we talk about paragraphs, we're not talking about full on essay paragraphs like you would for a dissertation or an essay. Some of these are going to be longer. Some of these are going to be shorter, right? Your uh, first paragraph, you may say, um, I'm writing in response to the position of student assistant at the Career and Professional Development Center which I came across on your website. Uh, I believe my communication, collaboration, and attention to detail would be an excellent fit in this position. Okay, so top skills and strengths. That's essentially, that's it for your first paragraph. Your next paragraph, right? Your second or your third paragraph or second and third paragraph. Okay, I'm gonna save the why because I like to, I like it to devote a certain, um, a particular paragraph just to the why, right? Your, your next paragraph, it should flow from your top, your first paragraph. You talked about your communication, your collaboration, all those kind of things. You want to get into, as a current student at CSU Stanislaus majoring in communication, I have developed effective techniques um, that can enhance uh, providing messages and uh, relating to people. For example, while working for a new student orientation, I did blah, 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 right? So again, you're flowing right directly to the example. You're getting into specific situations. Your third paragraph, that's what's missing a lot of times from the cover letter. Why? Why do you want this job? What are you hoping to accomplish, right? So maybe in respect to that same example, uh, I'm interested in applying for this position as uh, my new student orientation leader made a lasting impact on me, and I hope to do the same for subsequent incoming classes. Okay, that's a valid reason, right? Things that you want to stay away from, though. Okay, I want this job because I need a job. I want this job because I have loans that I have to pay off. I want this job um, because one day I hope to be the director in the same department. This is the first step. So you don't want to talk about any of that kind of stuff. You want to talk about specifically what you can do in this particular position and how that relates to you. Or it can be a particular um, environment that you're going into. So maybe it's a fast-paced environment and you like to work fast-paced environments. Or maybe it's a particular service provision, you know, um, that, that's something to talk about as well. And then your last paragraph is your request for action, right? You're summarizing some key points. You're going to say, um, you know, um, I look forward to the opportunity to further discuss my qualifications with you in person. Should you have any questions, feel free to reach me at da 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 da, -da. And then you're thanking them at the, at the end of that day. Some things that you want to consider, again, you, you might have good resumes developed before and they're looking nice. They're all formatted really good. And you might think that, that they're acceptable and they probably are in a lot of settings. The key is, are they appropriate for the setting that you're applying for, right? So if you have a lot of really good skills and things listed, but they're not relevant to that job, it's not going to matter to that employer. So you always want to go back and, and review for that, okay? 
And when we talk about tailoring your resume, right, it, it doesn't mean that you're starting the whole thing from scratch. It might be, just be changing a few bullet points or changing some skills. In some cases, you might have to do a completely new re a resume, but in some cases, you might just be changing the tone of an existing resume so you can tailor it to that particular job. Okay. Does your cover letter show your interest in the company? So this is important in the sense that if you are graduating or even not graduating, you're applying for a job and it's the same job. So think about in your discipline, right? Whatever that discipline may be, if you're applying for an internship um, and the rest of your entire class is applying for that same internship, 50 people, right? Um, your experiences are probably not gonna be marketably different from those 50 people, right? From those other people. So how do you leave an impact? How do you make yourself stand out? Inevitably, what goes missing is the interest and the enthusiasm to do that. So that's one way to, to do that, is to express a certain level of interest and enthusiasm in the company, in the cover letter, and in the interview. That will definitely help you stand out. Okay. Never want to apologize for skills you don't have. So what I mean by that is in your cover letter, uh, if in the job description, they say, um, you know, three years of working in fast paced environments, you never want to say, um, while I don't have three years of experience working in fast paced environments, uh, this is something I can pick up quickly. Never want to apologize for skills you don't have. You want to accentuate the skills that you do have, right? So in that sense, uh, you might want to say, uh, I'm a quick learner who can acc acclimate to any environment, right? In that sense. So again, you want to switch it more towards a positive there. Proofread, proofread, proofread. You want to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to make your resume presentable. So just take the extra step to proofread, uh, check for grammar, check for spelling, those kinds of things. And again, if you need us to take a look at your resume, you're free to make an appointment with us to go ahead and review some of those things. We do offer walk-in hours Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 1.30 to 3 o'clock and Thursdays. 10, 30, 12, all those walk-in hours right now because of COVID, those are all virtual. Um, so we are seeing students do face-to-face walk-in hours are all virtual. So why, why might you come into a walk-in? So if you just wanted a quick look at the structure of your resume, or you know, can you take a look at my objective statement? That's probably one of those quick kind of questions. If you want a full-on nuanced resume review or interview prep, you probably want to make an appointment through Higher Stand State um, to devote some more time to that. Please do go ahead and register on Higher Stand State. You can access that um, through your student portal. It's the yellow H. It'll take you to the Handshake um, application. From there, you can view current job appoint openings, schedule appointments with us, take a look at some of our upcoming events, and then post these uh, really great resumes that you're going to create as well. I think that's all that I have. Um, I will leave the rest of the time open for questions. Please feel free to ask in the chat um, or speak up verbally. If there's not any questions, thank you for attending, but I'll hang out a little bit um, to respond to any questions that there may be. I have a quick question. Yes. Do they add to, um, so if you're going to apply for a job, would they tell you that they're going to send your resume through the automated thing to pull out the words, or do you just... How, how would you know with that? Most of the time, it's the government agencies that are going to do that. Probably not the um, the private company. So you can take a fair bet that if it's a government agency, they're going to send it through that. So, but that's why you do have the opportunity to respond to them if if and when if they do end up rejecting your application, you can go back and say, you know, can you please go back and review this? Thank you. Will we get a copy of the video? Yeah, the video, so it's being recorded. It'll be posted on our website um, within a day or so. It'll be listed there. So I'll share, share that in the chat. Okay. Any other questions? Um, resume, cover letter, or it can be, I know this is a resume workshop, but anything else that you'd like to talk about career related, I'm open to those things as well.
If not, thank you for your time. Please do feel free to reach out um, via our website or I'll go ahead and put my email in the chat as well. I'm glad to hear from you and work, uh, work with you in any capacity that we can. Thank you for your attendance today. We do appreciate it.